Perfect. So welcome everyone uh, to the, our final bite-sized research data webinar. My name is Sean Lacey. I'm the Research Integrity and Compliance Officer uh, for the university. And I'm joined here today by Teresa Hearn, our Metadata and Research Data Librarian, who's going to take us through this uh, third and final webinar. Just as a small bit of a refresher to maybe what we've covered so far, we've looked at how to password protect your research data, how to encrypt your research data. So there are two previous webinars that we've done. And today what we're looking at is how to store and share your research data securely and on an open data repository. Now, everyone he here is here to really listen to Therese and to, for Therese to show how to actually do this. But I just wanted to set the scene a small bit to why we are do doing this. And I just, just want to make reference to two policies that we have in the university in relation to, which are our research data management policy and I'm going to mention our research integrity policy. But just one aspect of a research data management policy, it just kind of calls out what a researcher's responsibility is. And this is only just one aspect of it. There's a couple of other responsibilities that are called out in our research data management policy. But just to actually call it to say this, and I'll, I'll read it out because it's important to actually hear what has been said in our policy, is that the research, a responsibility of the researcher is around the planning for the ongoing custodianship of their data after the, after the completion of the research or in the event of their departure or retirement from the university, reaching agreement with their head of function as to where such data will be located and how this will be securely stored. So this very much speaks to the topic uh, of today's webinar around secure storage, secure sharing of data. And it, it would very much, I mean, it's not all about, oh, when the research study is complete, but it, it does align with that as well. And obviously when it comes to sharing, then that's where we are looking at ideally sharing it on an open data repository as long as there's consent or same as well. But also then in our research integrity policy, just to highlight that it is called out as an unacceptable research practice if we have if we manage our data poorly. Okay, so research data related misconduct relates to not preserving primary data or poor data management and storage, which again, very much linked to the topics that we have in today's webinar. And I'd always kind of say this when I mentioned these, uh, in this case, unacceptable research practice. Like this is not just us in the university, it is in the MTU. This is what we, we are aligned with national and international practices in relation to, in this case, research data misconduct. And nationally, we, we're looking at our national policy ensuring research integrity in Ireland. It's called out in there. The European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity is called out there as well. And just one other slide then maybe just to touch on before uh, uh, handing over to Ray's, it's just something else that's mentioned in our research data management policy. And again, it's around down to our responsibility as researchers, which is in relation to how we manage our data. And it, there is this expectation that we manage our data to the highest standards throughout the research data life cycle. And this is as part of the university's commitment to research ex excellence. And again, this is something that is called out in our research data management policy. And how we can try to do that is by looking at the fair data principles. Now, I won't delve into these in too much details because we have the expert here, Trace, to actually delve into this. But this very much speaks to essentially when you look at FAIR, having our, and if we're looking at our data at a later stage, is having our data findable, having it accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And by if we look at uh, maybe following the steps of what Trace is going to show us here today, we will actually be aligning with the, having our, our data, sharing our data, following aligned with the FAIR data principles which then would be aligning with our research data management policy, which also then was aligning with our research integrity policy. So basically handing over to Therese here to show us how to store and share our research data securely and on an open data repository. Over to you, Therese. Thanks, Sean. So I'm just gonna share my screen here. video as well um so thank you very much uh for attending today so as sean says we're going to talk about how to store and share your research data securely and um, a large part of that is going to be talking about um uh, uh research data repositories um which one to choose and so on um but uh I suppose, why we want to store our research data in the first place. Again, Sean has touched on this. Um, we want to because uh, in the first instance, we have to. So there's a carrot and stick approach. So we have to, according to MTU policies, national policies, there's EU policies. But most importantly, really, um, in, as really in research, it's money talks and 
there are funder mandates and funder policies um, uh, growing now really uh, to essentially ensure that we that we properly manage our research data and a large part of that is storing um, and sharing it um, throughout the, the, the research life cycle. Um, we also want to ensure it's fair. Um, again, Sean kindly touched on this. So um, we want to ensure that our data is findable, it's acceptable, it's interoperable and reusable. So when we talk about responsible research data management and adhering to policies on um, research data management, this is how we do it. Um, it's that this is the the step-by-step -step method. We just need to ensure that it is findable um, that then we can access it, that it's interoperable with with software and at the end of the day that it's that it's re reusable um, leading to reproducibility, which um, all leads to um, best practice in research integrity. Um, we had a talk as recently as yesterday on reproducibility. Um, I would suggest uh, uh, looking that up uh, reproducibility, what's in it for us. Um, on all the reasons why uh, we should uh, make our, our data reproducible. Um, again, uh, looking at the different aspects of the research cycle. Um, so getting straight into it, because we've a, we've a lot to cover um, in this in this bite size session. And the reality is um, where you store your research data securely depends on the sensitivity of the data. Um, so for sensitive data, and by that we mean data that is possibly that possibly contains identifiable information on human subjects, um, data that is commercially sensitive, um, we're talking about trade secrets, etc., or um, research data that may be under, uh, say, a, a non-disclosure agreement uh, between certain parties, be they funders, collaborators, um, and so on. And the reality is, if 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 your data is sensitive, um, it needs to be stored securely, um, with the following aspects defined. Um, and these are who has access to it, what protection um is going to be applied to it how long it's going to be stored for, and if there are any deletion protocols. So, so when it's going to be deleted, um, uh, if, you know, if, if, if it can be stored at all. Um, so in this case, then, the most common option really is that this would be stored on your MTU device with two secure backup locations. So this could be in the cloud or on, say, a removable device like a hard drive or a flash drive. Um, and the reality is, is that a lot of this would be dealt with uh, possibly in your ethics application, possibly in agreement with your research partners, your research supervisor um, or your um, your PI. So, again, every 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 project really is unique in in the data that it's going that, that you're going to collect in the data that's going to be stored in the sensitivity of the data. So. Um, really the application of critical thinking here on um you know whether your data whether it's covered by gdpr and so on all that has to be taken into account um as to where that's going to be stored and um definitely speak with you know your research partners your supervisors and so on to get the best advice on that but probably again most common option is going to be on your mtu device um, and then uh, with a second backup option of being in the again in the in the MTU secure cloud with possibly an external um, secure storage with that. So, as I say, this is just for 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 sensitive data that um, is agreed really by all parties and needs to be secured and not made publicly available. Um, next up then is essentially your shareable data storage. So this is all the other data besides your sensitive data. Um, again, that in agreement with your, your research partners or your PI or your, your supervisors that um is that is is deemed to be um to be shareable. Um, and we would encourage any non-sensitive data um 
to be as shareable as possible so that so that we can adhere to to the international best practice guidelines of making our research data fair um and the the best place to store shareable data is in a research data repository um and uh, again we have uh, methods on on the best choice of data repository to choose for your data um and these are based on uh, kind of I suppose a hierarchy of of um of uh choices really um so first up we'd be looking at your subject area is there um say an organizing body is there an authority um in in closely related to your subject area that they would have um, infrastructure in place that they would prefer you to place um, all data related to this subject um, in a certain repository. Okay, so that's that's the top of the hierarchy for choosing uh, a research data repository. Second up, um, you're going to be looking at your institution. Um, does, does your institution mandate or does your institution um, uh, decide essentially that that you put uh, research data in um, a particular depository. In MTU's case, we currently don't have a research data repository. However, I'll go through reasons for that um, later on, um, and that we do have we do have infrastructure that we would recommend. Also, your collaborators, um, your research collaborators, depending on the size of the project or the nature of the project, might. Um, you know, in agreement with you and and everybody else involved in the project might have a preferred uh, data repository uh, to place your your data. Um, and finally, um, and this is the case in for most projects, um, we would ask that you would go with the MTU recommendation for um, your research data repository, depending on your, you know, your funder mandates and so on. And um, in this case, in, in again, in most cases, this is going to be Zenodo. So this is a CERN created um, repository, CERN as in the Internet Large Hadron um, Collider guys. Um, so, um, you know, it's an authoritative source. It's it's backed up by the European Commission for all of their um, funded research um, data storage requirements. Um, and it is, I suppose, I suppose it's growing in the amount of uh, researchers that are utilizing it and it's growing in the amount of um, the amount of institutions that are recommending it for use as well. Um, an institutional data repository is is relatively rare um, unless you're talking about large, large scale institutions. So the infrastructure is already there, essentially, um, and it's open source. It ticks all of the boxes um, for shareable data storage and meeting the requirements um, of the vast majority of of the research funders that um, that you would need to be satisfying. So we'll speak about Zenodo um, in more detail in a while. We might just go through what it actually looks like to store um, your data sets on there. Um, then we'll move on to sharing sensitive research data. So this is essentially, this would be close to the end um, of the research data cycle um, where, you know, we're speaking possibly about um, uh, you know, that, that your data is collected and collated and you're looking to, to share it. So again, we're, we're, um, uh, we're separating out sensitive data from shareable data. In the case of sensitive research data, our partners in HEANET, um, you know, we're a client of theirs. They cover all of the Irish uh, research producing institutions, vast majority of them anyway. Um, and they have this item called file sender. It's end to end encryption. Um, and this would be the recommended method if you need to send data to any of your project partners. Again, um, it's best to cover these in any uh, ethics application and any data management plan. Um, it's it's it will be best practice to document this as 
Um, if you do need to send um, or share sensitive um, data that, that you would be using an end-to-end -end, um, encrypted application such as HA and its file sender. So um, it's just a case of, of looking this up and utilizing it. It's, it's relatively straightforward to do so. Um, so this can be used amongst our um, Irish um, HEI partners, essentially. So any of the, the Irish um, uh, research producing organizations, but they also give a certain amount of credits to, um, to institutions outside of that. Um, so again, look, depending on the nature of your project, if you do need to send sensitive research data by something like email, um, have a look at this, have a you know, have an agreement in place with each of your collaborators. Um, but this is again a recommended uh source for sharing. Um now Zenoda also um allows you to share um your shareable research data. So we spoke um previously about, about storage on this as well. But um, because in order to tick so many boxes in that, it will line up with your ORCID ID. It will provide um, digital object identifiers or DOIs for your data sets, um, all linking data back to you as a researcher and to your organization and affiliations. It allows you to share your research data with a link um, with um, a DOI um, all to best practice standards, um, essentially. And it also allows your data to take the boxes of being findable um, because you'll have that link, it's accessible. Um, the, the interoperability will, will essentially be dictated by your file types. Um, but you know they can they can accept all types of, of, uh, of data set uh file types and um uh then of course you know once uh you have satisfied the the first three elements of fair um you know reusability and reproducibility um should follow after that uh organically um so it's a nice um it's a nice and accepted and becoming way more common um uh link and and just uh you know, just an area for your, just a, a named data repository in people's data management plans that they are submitting to, say, Horizon Europe or all of the big funders. Um, and definitely the the place that we would recommend that you that you do place your research. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go through this if i have some time sean just um just a couple of minutes just to show you what zenodo looks like um i'm actually logged in here um i would suggest that you have a play around with this so it's just a case of simply uploading um your own username and password um we can create communities we can have mtu communities we are working on possibly um an institutional um uh ID or, or login for this, but that, that's going to involve possibly talking to um, uh, IT and HEA net and open air, but it's it's something that's that's in process. But the reality is, is that an individual um, account on this is absolutely fine. And and um, it's it's does exactly as it says on the tin that you can just create a new upload. You can create a new community as well um, with your project partners. Um, if you wish, or, um, you know, you could have it for your school or your department or your research center as well. So um, it's it's just a case of uh, um, uploading your item. It'll ask you if you have already have a DOI for this upload. If you don't, they will provide you with one. You just tell it what your resource type is, what the title is, publication date, who the creators are um, and so on. Um, and you can keep it as simple as you wish or as detailed as you wish. And, and it will also it will also keep the different versions of your your data sets as well. So um, which is great for quality control 
Um, again, reproducibility, if, if, if you do want to, to go back over it yourself, if there's any issues, you can look through all the versions of the data sets that you have put in. Um, you can, of course, over here, uh, you can uh, change the visibility of um, all your files or individual files, um, depending on what you upload. So again, look the best way of of um of sussing these out is to is to just play around with them, and um, uh, you can become an expert quite quickly uh, on on items like Zenodo um, uh, just by just by applying it to to your own test data sets or 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 data sets that um that, that you want to upload they're um then they're automatically visible i'm just going to go back to the start and just show you say if we look for any of our colleagues um uploads um so yeah there's a few there um had one from um Put that incorrectly. I did. Um. So yeah. So you know, possibly. Um. We have items here from from our colleagues. I'm not recognizing any of the names. When I did <laughs> type in the search earlier, of course, um, I had uh names popping up that I did recognize as being MTU researchers, um. Uh, of course they're not there now, but they um they're definitely there, um and um, I might just go back and yeah no, I was logged out the last time as well, um so just to give you an idea of of what the um what the final product looks like essentially um now of course this could be um uh you know um constantly updated as well or constantly being looked at by this author or project partners so in this case look they have a pdf up there um and um there could be anything up here um and this person then so we have a dot rar file i'm not even sure what that is um but um yeah so we can actually go into that we can view that that file um and um just have an idea of what people are looking at so we can see here the versionings um and so on and obviously this person then they have a doi and they have a link to um to their data set that they can um share with others um or that you know anyone looking on here can look at depending on you know you can look at um similar subject types or similar projects or authors that um that you that that you wish to to look up as well, so that is an auto. Again, this would be for our shareable research data. Um, just to give you an idea of what that data set looks like, and it's in a file type that my um that my that I don't I don't have the app to open at the moment. Um, but again, you know this is something that you can document and um put in writing in your research data management plan. Um, about the file types and about how to actually um, open these uh, when they're on places like Zenodo. Okay, so um, as I say, uh, we're, you know, it, this is a bite-sized session. So that is our quick fire um, round there on um, storing and sharing your research data. Um, and I suppose what I would say is if you do have any questions, um, please email me <clears throat> and I can actually take you through, depending on, on your, your project, um, you know, and all of the elements within it, I can actually take you through um, whether it's, it's, you know, it, whether it would be best to put your stuff up on um, a data repository or whether it would be best to, to store it on your own system. Um, and we can have a look through all of that. And I can actually take you through um, putting data sets up on, on Zenodo and possibly looking at file types um, and versions and all of that sort of stuff. Um, or any other questions that you might have on this, do get in contact um, because it is um, on the policies that Sean showed you there, it's part of the university's obligations to provide um, the infrastructure and training for you. So um, that's what I'm here for. 
Um, so I'm more than happy to help if you have any further questions on this. Okay, so that's me, Sean. Your mute there, Sean, sorry. Very good. Thanks very much, Trace. Uh, I need to repeat my words there now, but uh, look, thanks very much for that, uh, Trace. That was very useful. Uh, I'm just going to maybe, I don't know, your camera's off there. Yeah, yeah. you're back on. Perfect. And just to see, look, are there any questions? I have one or two questions I might just ask. Well, maybe I suppose if I was to, like if I think of the title to this web, uh, webinar that we have here, it's about kind of sharing our data securely and then looking at the open side of it. So sharing the data securely, you're pointing us towards HEANET. And mm -hmm. then if we're looking at open data repository, you're pointing us towards Zenobia. Would they be, is that yeah. kind of the main? Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you can, you can have a link, um, you can have your DOI, um, so you can point people in the direction of it. Um, Zenodo just packages it up nicely um, yes. for you to, to share it. Perfect. So, uh, just I know it's it's crazy when you do something on live how it doesn't work out. You said you typed in Monster Technological University couldn't find anybody. I went off and did it and came up with a list of people that I recognised, but it wasn't the same listing as what you had. So for a sanity yeah. check for trays, it it it's just it, these things happen when you try to do it live yeah. at times, you know. But anyway, I typed in Monster Technological University into the search on Zenodo and it came up with a couple of people that uh, I would recognize that didn't actually appear in uh, in Therese's list. So mm -hmm. it is there. Okay, definitely. And uh, HEA net, I just checked out there though, because actually that's not something I've used either myself and uh, very straightforward. I just logged yeah. in there. It's actually, if you type in HEA net uh, file sender, you get directed to the web page straight away. And it's as easy as you click on it, you set, so type in your name, it's done very fast. There's very little even registration required. Yeah. And it's as simple as basically typing in who you want to send it to, uploading your file. You can give a timeline to how access is and then a press go. And then that's it. So thanks for, I, I didn't realize that uh, uh, about HENS. So thanks very much, Sinead. And Zenodo is very good. And I can speak to her personally. I, mean, I think it was like two, two years ago, I first started using it and it was like, oh, am I doing this right? But hmm. th there's nothing, there is nothing to it. And you can go back and edit uh, you know, if you pipe, type in maybe an abstract or your outline, you want to change, oh, the narrative there, I want to change that. Th that can be done. That That's easy enough done, you know? Yeah. A question, though, on it, when it comes to Zenodo, uh, and if we're uploading our data, um, like, I'd imagine, like, the data that we upload, obviously, you know, it's not going to have, uh, you know, it's not going to be personal information or anything like that. But mm -hmm. some, like, that data set that we'd have, like that probably is the final data set. But I suppose there might have been data manipulation that happened before to get to that point of the data set. Mm -hmm. Do we kind of share how we may have manipulated the raw data to getting up to this, we'll say, shared data point? Do we kind of maybe outline how the data maybe have tweaked uh, in a readme file or something? Is that something? Yeah, that and I think, I think, yeah, th that would be preferable. But I suppose... We don't necessarily have to share every single thing either. However, if it is going to lead to your um, research being reproducible um, and that really it would be best practice to take people through the methodology of how you arrived at your results, then yes, I would absolutely say that sharing essentially your working out um, uh, would, would, would allow that and that would be best practice. What we're kind of what another great feature of making um research reproducible is also that we're we're cutting down on research waste um and we are possibly also showing our null results so that somebody else or yourself in the future can come to the point where ah okay actually i did that 10 times and that didn't work out so you're coming to point 10 um and you're then moving forward you're building upon that research um so, yeah, I would say if it is helpful for reproducibility, um, again, and making that research fair, I, I would share um, all of those those working outs. Um, uh, yeah, I suppose all of those elements that, that you came to it. Yeah, yeah it, does, it does speak to the reproducibility aspect, mm -hmm. actually, you know, when you say it, because I suppose I'd be just thinking that, you know, when I collect data in some way, like there might be missing that values and I might, in my analysis, need to impute for those missing values. Equally, there could be typos or there could be outliers, and I might have had to handle them in a particular way. And I, I, I would think that that's part of my, you know, the research story and kind of the, re the life cycle of the data that I have, like the end product. 
has all those bits been fixed to it or whatever the case is. I think if we're looking at the reproducibility aspect, it's important to kind of share or kind of outline how those what those tweaks would have been. I think. Am I right? With yeah, that? yeah, I I think so too. I mean, now that's not to say that it can be a dilemma for for certain people. There's there's there is definitely um, you know, possibly anxiety on on certain amount of people when you know this is this would be a new method that they could possibly get criticized for their mistakes, making this stuff available. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose it does look, it, it requires a certain amount of culture change, but the, the um, definitely it, it would be best practice and the advantages um, would be, again, look in terms of reducing research waste and so on. Um, yeah, it would be, it would be highly advantageous to anybody looking on doing similar results to have this methodology and those missing pieces filled in where they could just see all the versions of, of, um, of the processing of the data. Yeah. And if a, a researcher in, a, in the university here had maybe before they went live on Zenodo had some questions that you've kindly said, look, that they can reach out to you. Absolutely. As yeah. well. So it's not that any researcher needs to be like feeling that they're alone in doing this. I mean, there's especially the first time doing it. It could be a case of, look, am I really doing this right or not? And like Trey has offered her, her support there as in her role as research data, metadata librarian for the university. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I work with, I work with people on multi million euro projects and also, you know, people doing their, um, you know master's assignments as well um you know even before they get to their dissertations so yeah absolutely um every research project is unique even for experienced researchers so um and these are these are new guidelines really a lot of the time um so yeah absolutely that's that's my job to be to consult and to and to review these plans as well you know we can send on a, a rough draft or a first draft and we can go through them um piece by piece um and uh, yeah hopefully making life easier for for everybody Super. Thanks very much, Therese. Um, any questions from anyone else? No, that, that look, that's fine. I suppose again, like when you think of the title, I look, this is a bite-sized webinar, so it's not going to be exhaustive of everything. And I suppose like from like Therese very much has looked at sharing data securely and then how do we share it on, on an open platform? And I suppose the two take-homes that we're having here is HEA net. If you're looking at sharing data securely, and then if you're looking at an open platform, open data repository, that Zenodo would be uh, the one that we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, perfect. It would be the main recommendations. Now, look again. Yeah. Every project is different, and if there are any deviations from that, we can work those out step by step yeah. as well. Super. <laughs> look, that's great. Uh, thanks very much, Trace. Thanks for the time. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone, for joining this webinar. I hope you find it of use. Uh, it will be shared on our YouTube channel uh, later on and also on SORT or Institutional Repository. So uh, you have access to this uh, going forward as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.